Welcome to Build Cooks. I'm Bill Cook and today we're making a Frisco patty melt. Now let's get started. All right, so basically you're talking about a hamburger, so any hamburger starts with a hamburger patty. So if you saw my uh, batcher salad episode, you'll recognize most of the steps here, but this is a little different because the bread is rectangular, you can't make a round patty. So we're making a hand-formed patty this time. So what I'm doing is I'm breaking up my meat. It's really cold, just on that edge of frozen a little bit in there. I've got my Billy Bob's Black Label Southern Hickory Dry Rub I'm putting on there. I usually put that in all my burgers. It's pretty doggone tasty. So uh, again, it's only available in my kitchen. So sorry about that. But any uh, dry rub, you know, that sort of thing, barbecue rub works great. All right, so I'm mixing the meat around. I got a bunch on the foil, so I'm picking all that up. At least not, want not. A little nugget of frozen there. Kind of pick that apart a little gently without tearing it too badly. It's not too much, just a couple of those. All right, yeah, a couple more. One of these days I'll actually thaw meat up properly, but that's no fun. Now, there's a reason why I work with really, really cold meat when I'm making a hamburger patty, and I will go over that here in just a minute. Once I get done with this, this is uh, lo lots, of, lots of fun to watch. You know, everyone loves it. I don't know. Uh, maybe you do, maybe you don't. If you don't, well then, there's the skip ahead part. All right, so we're getting our two piles going. Make sure they're about even. Again, it's a pound of meat, half pound each. Eh, put a little from this into that. Even up a little bit. Got it again, maybe this little piece. Nah, it's good enough, whatever. All right, so move one pile over to the other piece of foil and let's get started forming these. Now this is a different technique for forming hamburger patties. Um, I, you can do this on anything. If you don't have a ring, you can do this. It works fine. Uh, I prefer the ring, but in this case, since it has to be more of a rectangle, Eh, the ring don't work. I don't have a rectangle ring. So, a rectangle, would you have a rectangle ring? I don't think you would. I think we have a rectangle box? A rectangle, rectangle. Eh, whatever. So what I'm doing here is I'm gently nudging the meat. I'm not smashing it. I'm not squishing it. I'm not mushing it. I'm just kind of pushing it down a little bit to try and form it and then squeezing it back in to keep the ends from getting too thin and keeping the, the middle too thick. It's just kind of a feel there. Um, now that's about the right size. It looks good. Now this is a little something a little different than I normally do. I hate, transfer that by hand to see if it's holding together. The meat is really, really cold. Cold meat doesn't really stick to itself very well. When meat gets warm, it melts and the fat, you can squish it in and all that stuff. But the problem is then you start getting a big block of solid meat. This keeps it more like individual, you know, strands of meat, like it's ground up. Keeps it more tender, more juicy, more, more delicious, a looser meat. And uh, that one looks pretty good. So let's move on to the next one. Same technique, just kind of gently massaging it, using the one hand to bring it in and kind of form it into the shape. I mean, they're not true rectangles. It's more like a football sort of thing, but it's close enough. Now I'm spinning it around to get the other side because my hands don't go backwards. If you have backwards hands, you can obviously skip that step. You don't have to do that, but uh, I don't. So I'm gonna keep spinning the meat around here. So I'm working with my forward hands and uh, just get this thing into the proper shape. Uh, again, it's not a true rectangle and right there I'm just pinching a little bit where it's wanting to crack and come apart because if it cracks, obviously when you're cooking it, it gets destroyed and then your hamburger is destroyed. The hamburger patty is the foundation of a hamburger. If you don't have a good patty, you don't have a good hamburger. So learn this technique, master this, you'll figure it out. And I'm going to do the hand transfer, see, Ooh, yeah, that's holding together pretty well. It's got a few loose bits there. I'll just pull that back together. That's looking pretty good at this point. That's not too bad. Keep spinning around and work the edges. Just kind of uh, nudge it in place. Again, we're not smashing it or squishing it. And your heat from your hands is gonna start heating it up and melting the fats in there as well. So you don't wanna work it too much. That looks like we about hit it. It's the right size. Perfect. Move on to washing my hands. 
All right, hey, I learned where the edit button is, so this won't take very long. Hey, what do you know, I'm already back. Now, salt and pepper, always, always season your meat. This is uh, gonna be a continuing theme of everything you ever see, uh, because you're always supposed to season everything. It's how you get flavor. So season your meat, a little salt, a little pepper, fold and flip. Same technique for every hamburger I do. Fold and flip. There you go. And fold that one over. Flip that. And what do you know? Hey! That is the best game of three card money ever. I won on both choices. Can you believe that? It's fantastic. All right, so patty melt. Onion. This is just a regular yellow onion. Nothing too terribly special. I've rinsed it off a little bit to... Uh, in case there's any schmutz on it. I'm gonna try and peel the parchment off. That, uh, that sometimes goes well, but it usually doesn't. This one is particularly hard. That parchment is crazy hard on there. So I think I should probably just give up and go to the knife. Just slice me off a couple of things here. So you want it uh, not terribly thin, not terribly thick. Some people go with huge thick onions. I don't like that. These are about 3 16 maybe a quarter of an inch. And you always need a lot more onion than you think you do. It shrinks down when you cook. So cut off a lot more. You can always not use extra, but you can't go back because it takes so long to make the onions. Just make an extra ring of onions. You'll cut some extra. And if you don't end up using it, well, then good for you. So separate it out. You got the thin outer bits that never cook up well and your parchment you want to separate those and throw away the stuff that's obviously not going to cook very well and uh, there's your rings now i'm going to cut mine in half because it's easier to cook them that way and uh, that's pretty much it now when you want to break them up they don't want to come apart they want to stick together and uh, this one here is really being pain in the butt so i had to stab it a little you know let it know who's boss and uh, we're going to break that up really good and you know get them ready for cooking and all that stuff and there you go, that looks pretty good. I think I got all of it, and that's about it, except this guy's over here. Didn't want to go. Yeah, yeah, got it. All right, move all that stuff off the side. Move that over. Let's do some bread. Okay, bread time. Well, I got four pieces of sourdough bread. This is actually the Francisco brand of sourdough bread. Uh, it's not the best bread in the world. It's the bread I had uh, on hand. I don't know if you know, we're living in apocalypse now so sometimes you can't get everything you want this is available kind of more widespread commercially so I'm spreading some butter out <clears throat> you don't need a ton just a little bit of butter that is way too much butter right there just letting you know that's not the amount of butter you're supposed to use so uh, just a little bit and then you're gonna put Parmesan cheese on top of it and there you go just spread butter around yep yep that's what uh, that's what this is it's just uh, Fat guy spreading butter on bread. There you go. That one's got too much, so I'm gonna smear some off. I'm gonna put it over there. That's just some great buttering technique right there. I don't mind bragging about it. <clears throat> yep. Oh, look at that. Now, uh, that looks done. You don't have to melt the butter. I just gave it 25 seconds instead of 23 seconds in the microwave. And uh, that is the finest quality tube cheese there is. You, can, you just can't beat tube cheese. <laughs> I spent 10 minutes, took everything out of my fridge. I swear I had a nice tub of really good Parmesan, but uh, I couldn't find it. So I must have used that up. Tube cheese it is. Fantastic. It'll work for this. Um, so your bread's done. You can kind of do cheese on there. Tons of it. Let's go to the cooking process. I've got a cast iron pan, which I do own a cast iron pan if you watch the... Uh, the video with the broccoli beef and then uh, you'll know why I should have used a cast iron pan for that but uh, I was gonna cook the onions and that while I do the bread on the other but I decided nah I'm gonna go with another pan for the onions I just don't want to switch everything around and everything else so I've got a little bit of butter left over I'm gonna put that in my pan and cook my onions and butter that's about two tablespoons of butter which is a lot for the amount of onions that I'm doing, but I want them to taste good, so there you go. I put that up to kill, and uh, that sucker, yep, 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 turned it up to kill. Yeah, so uh, this should uh, go very well. The butter's already melting, so 
easy peasy. We don't have to sit here and stare at buttermilk for uh, you know two minutes or something. That's uh, starting to get there. And uh, just move that around until it starts to bubble a little bit. You start getting some heat in the pan. It's just starting to sizzle just a little bit. So we're going to put our onions in. They take forever to brown onions. It is not a fast process necessarily. You are going to take time. You got to sweat them down. You got to caramelize them. You're trying to get the sugars out, the flavors out, and uh, get that nice browning effect. One of the things that'll help do that, a little bit of salt. Take the moisture out of them a little and uh, bring the, the wonderfulness. I've got a little extra butter. I was trying to sneak out. Caught it just in time. Put that in the sink. It's over out of the way. Keep your work area clean at all times. Now, uh, you want to coat those onions in the uh, butter, but it's about that moment right there I'm realizing, hey, didn't I just dislocate my shoulder a few days ago? Yeah, that hurt a bit so I'm gonna stop flipping onions <laughs> let's get our bread down now that our pan's hot now you put a cheese side down and roundy round to roundy round the round top of the bread towards the round side of the pan that's the way that works that's math can't do anything about that that's just the way you're supposed to do it so put your two pieces of bread down let them sit it's gonna take a few minutes for that to get nice and toasted up and get your cheese all melted and goldeny now we're turning the onions a little bit down to just maim at this point. Uh, you don't want to uh, kill them, but I was just trying to get the pan started a little hotter, a little faster. So just keep them about medium heat and uh, break them down at this point. Keep moving around, trying to get the onion in contact with the surface of the pan. That's kind of the idea. And uh, there you go. We're browning onions, which is not not a really involved process it just takes a lot of time i mean if you do this you can do it on low heat it'll take you 20 minutes half an hour to brown onions it really will i'm speeding it up because uh, i got started a little late i've already got stuff in the oven and the clock on the timer says four minutes so i'm gonna try and brown onions in four minutes anybody that knows anything knows that's not possible so you see i just slid the uh cast iron pan to the middle of the stove get a little more room plus the vent for the hood the the, the oven's at at 450 the vent for the, on the top of the oven is right there in the center so now all that hot air is going up heating that pan up because you want to conserve energy i mean global warming polar bears and all that stuff so you know just move that over it gives me a little more room to work anyways and play with your onions for a while that sounds super awesome it's <laughs> makes for good content Let's check our bread, see how we're doing. And, woo, that looks perfect. Oh, that looks lovely. Wait till you see this, wait till you see this. Oh, it looks so good. Now again, you gotta make sure you get the roundy round to the roundy round, and boom. Look at that, that is, that's perfect. I don't know if it gets any better than that. It's wonderful, it's crispy, it's delicious. Now I put the, the other side down, there's nothing on it, it's completely dry. I do that to get it a little bit browned on that side that keeps it from getting super soggy uh, when you put everything all the juicy stuff in your bread will completely dissolve on you if you don't cook it just a little bit on that side it's not much obviously so I've got the uh, ultra fancy paper plate there put your uh, put your bread down on your your fine uh, French paper plates yes I, uh, nothing but the finest here all right so next one now now that is that is a lot of cheese on there, but it is going crazy. See that that when, when you use good cheese, good cheese knows its place. It knows I am supposed to melt. I am supposed to get in the heat. My place is to to suffer and die as, as politely as possible. The cheap stuff in the tube is like hell no, I'm out of here, man. So it tries to make an escape. You're gonna make a hell of a mess if you use the tube cheese. Just saying, it's gonna splatter. Don't ask me why it jumps so much. It's probably the fake chemicals they use to make it or whatever it is. I have no idea how they make that cheese, but it's lawyers said they can call it cheese, so I trust them. Now, you may have noticed the button down at the bottom there. I still have the uh, frying pan, the, the, the knob there. It, it is still set to kill, and I have my bread going. Yep. Completely oblivious. Okay, well, let's uh, check on our... Uh, on our tater tots, grab an oven mitt out of my oven mitt drawer. 
It's also where I keep my Picassos, so don't tell anybody. All right, uh, Tater Tots, give it a squish. Nope, still too squishy. Put them back. Knob, still set to kill. Still oblivious, still moving along. Playing, turning the timer off on the oven. Give him a few more minutes. Bread's still going. Now you think, okay, here's where he figures it out. Here's where he understands, oh, I've got this up way too high and I'm going to burn my bread. Nope. Do you think the smoke would have been telling me maybe? Or the fact that they had already stuck together completely? Nah. Let's just move back the oven so that adjusting that knob, nothing bad could happen. Nope. All right. So uh, as we wait in suspense to see the uh, bread burst into flames, I'm just going to sit here and pick out a couple of the thin little bits of onion. Remember I said when you get to the outer layer of the parchment how it's too thin and it won't cook right? Well, as you're cooking it, you'll find them pretty quick. And those things are disgusting to eat. So if you get a couple, fish them out. That's what I'm doing there. And just breaking up the onions. They're they're getting there. They're they're pretty close. I mean we're we're four minutes plus into doing the onion onions, five minutes, something like that, and they are they're getting there. I can't twenty the ten minutes minimum on onions, but I'm I'm cooking them a little hotter than normal. And uh move the bread out, get the other thing here, and let's flip it and see. Ooh, 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 tragedy averted, barely. Well that's a little crispy. I won't lie, he finally figured out the knob was way too high. Turn that back down to MAME and uh, let's get started uh, with uh, the onions back again. But as you see the bread, see the tips of the bread, how it's laying up on the edge of the pan? That's why you put the round side to the outside of the pan. Roundy round to roundy round. It's math. Can't do anything about that. Just enjoy. All right, so get that bread out of there. We got that little bit of toasting on the other side. The pan is obviously smoking hot. I'm going to go get that way over here in the cold part of my kitchen, grab a trivet out of my trivet drawer, and uh, put that down over there to cool that pan down real quick. All right, now it's time to get down to the good stuff. Let's move our cast iron pan onto that heat, turn that back up to kill, because we are about to cook a burger. Now, the reason I'm doing it in a frying pan and not on a grill is because when they're this shape, they kind of break apart on the grill it's hard to get them to work so what i do is i cook them in a frying pan for this it's uh they, they taste fine they taste great but i've dropped a couple burgers through the grill on the uh the grate on the grill and uh that that doesn't that doesn't make your night wonderful it just doesn't all right our onions are done they look pretty good they could use a little more time but yep oh, that's a little warm <laughs> Never touch the handle. The handle gets hot. Don't do that. Grab your thermometer. Let's see. 300 degrees. Not quite yet. We're getting closer, but that's not quite it. Let's see how those tots are doing. Oh, yeah. Tater tots. Now, the French and the Belgians may have invented fries or frites or whatever, but America is responsible for the tater tot. The glorious, wonderful mix of leftover bits that are balled up and fried. You're welcome, America, right there. <laughs> I don't know what it is about tater tots, but they're tasty. Um, so I'm gonna ball those up so that they don't get frostbite sitting over here. I'm not pinching it closed or sealing it off. I'm leaving a, the top pretty open so that they don't steam to death. If, they, if you close that off, they will just get mushy and steamed and nasty. Don't do that. Just pinch it just a little bit. Okay, let's see. 400, 410, 15, 400 ish. Okay, we're right about there. Let's cook us a burger. It's about time. All right, so I have lightly oiled the pan, just a little canola oil, wiped it around with a uh, paper towel. There's no puddle of oil or anything else in there. You can see I've got my uh, patty sitting in the fryer and the aluminum foil there. I'm Going back over to do something, I have no idea what. Oh, okay. I'm grabbing a pan. There, that seemed important at the time. Okay. So grab, grab your patty, throw it down there. I'm gonna do this in real time. No edits, no nothing. This is real time right here. So, you get to see how long it takes to cook this. And these are a little thinner than a regular half pound burger would be because they're elongated. So it cooks a little faster. But this is real time, that pan was at 400 degrees when it went down, 
and you're watching this happen as it happens. So just temperature a little bit. I turned it down a little because, I mean, obviously you want to cook the, the hamburger patty a little bit less than you would have cooked the bread. I mean, that just makes sense. But uh, yeah, it's, it's splattering, it's crackling, it is getting all that wonderful Maillard flavor on there. It's, it's browning. All the juices are coming out and starting to you know, crispy up on the bottom of the pan. And cast iron is doing its magic. And that's what cast iron does. That's why everyone loves it. So it's fantastic. I just got to keep putting... I keep mine on the top shelf in the pantry. And, and uh, darn things are heavy. And sometimes I don't feel like uh, getting up there to get it. So I should put it lower so it's easier to get to. But yeah, we're just over a minute on this thing and I'm gonna test the edges it'll come up and tell you when it's ready it's almost kind of it'll move you'll see it oh see it moved as I started picking up that one side so that tells me that it's released from the pan it's ready and it's got all that wonderful browning that was almost a minute and a half on one side pretty much on the first side there now I didn't put a lid on it the first time because I don't want the steam to steam the top of it while it's cooking. I want fresh pink meat to go down against the frying pan. Now that I've flipped it, I can, I can put the lid on it. But this is a vented lid that has little steam holes in it. It'll hold in heat but let out the steam. At least that's the theory. And this sucker is old. I mean, this has been in my family forever. I'm, what, third generation with this thing? It's got to be 70 years old plus. I don't know. It's amazing. But uh, I don't know where it came from or any of that stuff. But uh, yeah, we're just cooking away here. We're just over two minutes on the burger total at this point. And uh, it's just going to do its thing for a minute. This is, again, real time. No edits. Just want you to see how long it actually takes to cook a burger. We're at uh, two and a half minutes right there. <laughs> this is not... It doesn't take forever to cook it. So... Uh, we're just sitting and waiting, and the uh, haunted lid is letting me know that the burger's getting close. We're almost coming up on three minutes. The handle just moves on its own, apparently, at some point. I didn't even realize my lid's haunted. Hi, Grandpa. That was his lid. It must be him saying, hey, your burger's done. So uh, it's done. It is ready. Uh, juices are flowing out of it. I'm kicking off a little extra juice. There's just piles of it coming off. And you don't want this super greasy. So I'm going to set it in this frying pan. This pan's cooled down, but it's not cold. It's going to sit there for a second. Um, and I'm going to throw the next patty down, but there's so much grease in this pan. There's so much. I don't like a deep fried burger. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit out. Just, just pat it with the uh, paper towel and uh, pull a little bit of that grease out. Let's get the next patty down here and get that in. Oh, it looks delicious. looks amazing. It'll be so good. So we're going to edit a little bit here because you already watched one in real time. You don't need to watch the second one in real time. You get how that works. But that's, uh, that's basically it. You know, it's going to get about a minute on this side and, uh, Flip it over. Now I'm gonna slide the pan off here and angle it down, and I'm gonna move the, the patty that's resting up a little bit so that it's not sitting in its grease. Uh, you know, I'm on a diet. I gotta, I gotta think about every calorie, and that right there is just, you know, too much grease is, is not good for you. So, you know, I really try and, you know, eat healthy as much as possible, as you can obviously tell. You know, I'm using diet cheese there, the, the Swiss cheese, it's got the holes in it. So that's a lot less calories than cheese without holes. I mean, it's just, that's just math. So, you know, cover that up, melt the cheese, keep the burger warm. The onions are still looking good over there. They're not on the heat. They are done cooking, uh, but they still have the heat from the oven. They're keeping them warm. We are just about done. Let's check those edges and see if it wants to move. It's not moving, you can see that? It moved the pan, it's not moving. The center isn't moving, so she is not, she isn't ready. That just told me right there, she's not ready to go. So we're gonna leave that just a little bit longer. So that's the, the kind of stuff there that you're looking for. If you're gonna move it and the whole thing wants to slide away, she's cooked, she's done. But it's been long enough, it has to be pretty close. So I'm gonna move that and I don't know if you can see, it really uh, started to break apart quite a bit, so I'm kind of pushing the edges back in. 
try to hold it back. If that had been on my barbecue grill, that would have gone straight through the grill and I would be getting a Big Mac right now and pissed as hell. So thank God I did this on the stove with the cast iron. So we've jumped ahead again. Burger is done at this point. It's been about another minute, minute and a half, something like that. I'm gonna turn that heat off completely. Sucker is done. You see all the grease has come out. She's really, oh, she's beautiful. She's a beauty. Try and get this big spatula under it. One quick jab. Get it in the frying pan over here. And uh, there you go. Now, first thing you do in this situation, do you put cheese down in the patty? No. You address your frying pan sitting on a hot stove because that hamburger patty over there is not gonna burn your house down. But a frying pan left unattended sitting on a burner might. Always deal with your frying pan first. Cheese can melt and what it, however it wants to, but there you go. All right, so let's assemble. Thousand Island. It's good for this because the cheese is and it, salty and everything else, uh, the sourdough bread. You can use mayonnaise if you want, but Thousand Island is fantastic. The only trick is you got to use a lot. I am not using enough. That I should have put that on each slice of bread instead of uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread it and pick some up and move it to the other side. The second I take a bite of this, I'm going to realize I have screwed up and I'm going to put a lot more Thousand Island on here because it is just not enough. You have to be able to flavor, you know, feel the, taste that flavor. It's uh, the right texture, right everything, and that is not it. So double the amount you just saw me put on there and you will be good to go. Now uh, grab your onions, grab a spatula, and start scooping your onions on the bread here on one side. And uh, should have gone with an extra slice of uh, onions there probably. Again. You, you don't have to use it all, but man, you're going to be pissed when you find out you didn't have enough. So always cut a little extra onion. And uh, then we're going to put a little cheese down on top of the onions. Again, diet cheese with holes in it. Super, super uh, good for you. Put our low calorie diet hamburger patty down here with again, diet cheese all over it. You know, we're always thinking of, uh, thinking of that girlish figure. It's important. Look at all that. Look at all that needless calories in the bottom of that pan, all that grease. See? It's a miracle I'm not uh, anorexic. Now put your bread up there, and you have just about completed this. I'm going to grab the knife and slice this in about two seconds. This is a very sharp knife. Get your nice, proper uh, three-finger stance. Cut through that sucker. Do that over here. This is some really crispy bread, but it's still edible. It was close. Cut through that. Now check our doneness. Look at that. Medium rare. Uh-huh. And medium, just the way my life likes it. So that is a Frisco patty melt. It's done. It's awesome. Jazz hands. <laughs> so thanks for tuning in. I hope you make this. It is really delicious. If you do, put something in the comments. Let me know how it turned out. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, all that stuff. And we look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks.